better every but I feel like I'm here. I'm 29 and I live with two chef muscular dystrophy. Welcome to the Action Two Chef Conference 2019. I'm sorry that I couldn't be here today, so I prepared a short video to give you an insight into accessible gaming and spreading awareness that you don't have to stop gaming if you have to share. I'd like to give you an insight into my story into accessible gaming. That was good. My journey began about five years ago when I decided to completely give up gaming because I had muscle weakness and I could I could no longer hold the controller. It really upset me having to completely give up gaming. I, I didn't really know what to do next. So it was only after I gave up that I really realized how important gaming was. And my mom and my family could really tell how depressed and angry I became. It was only then that I realized how gaming was important to me because it helped me through a lot of my anger issues, mental health problems and isolation. So having to give up felt I was losing a friend. I wanted to find a solution to this problem, so I searched on the internet uh, to really to find out if there was a way to um, for me to carry on gaming. My search led to Special Effect, the gaming charity. I contacted Special Effect and they arranged an appointment to come out and see me at home. Two occupational therapists came for a special effect and I was completely astonished with all the equipment they brought and it kind of lifted a black cloud off my mind really because it gave me the avenue that yeah there is ways to continue gaming. I felt that I was finally listened to and I realized that people actually care about um, my enjoyment and care about um, kind of finding a way to help me. So it was just amazing. I just felt like I was listen listened to for, for the first time. This made my passion for gaming ignite again. Yeah. Special effect designed a special setup for me and I'll explain a bit about what they've done. Because I was primarily a PlayStation gamer, I, I found problems swapping from the PlayStation 3 to the PlayStation 4 because the controller was completely different. That was one of the issues I had. So with Special effect, they just gave me a PlayStation 4 controller that was a lot lighter. The buttons were a lot more sensitive to press, so I didn't have to struggle too much. And they also they incorporated switch ports into my PS4 controller. So for that, I used it as a head use it as a head switch so i use just um, kind of tap my head and it presses which is a lot a lot better but those switches can really be put anywhere kind of they can be put anywhere you need it they it's they can even put it on your chin or uh, under the controller or on your knee a anywhere really that is uh, kind of uh, right for you. 
Yes, so after that, after a while, they came back to me and they came back to me and they helped me to kind of alter my uh, gaming setup. As you can see, this is a video of my current setup, my PlayStation 4 controller adapted by special effect. As you can see, there's a switch is plugged into it. And also, I've added bits onto the controller just so it's a lot more easier for me to grip, which um, that is a big problem because it used to really slip out of my hand. And as you can see, there's, there's a switch there that's for my head and the uh, PlayStation 4 controller. Is on a stand which I've had 3D printed, but you can get it for special effect as well now. So yeah, that is my setup. It's it's quite good. These devices that you can see, the smaller one in the left is called the Titan One, and the bigger one on the right is the Titan Two. These devices allow you to use any controller on any console. So when I play on my Xbox, I can still use my PS4 controller because that's the best one for me. But the Titan 2 also allows you to uh, use your voice to activate. Use your voice to activate gaming, which is that is very useful as well for gaming if you find it quite difficult. As you can see, this is the new Xbox Adaptive Control by um, Xbox and it, it's a first device really for accessible gaming created by the gaming companies which is quite a uh, groundbreaking. But yeah, b before this was launched, it, I, I threw uh, Accessible Gaming, I worked with Microsoft to kind of test it before release, just to see if it was accessible enough, and uh, kind of just try it out, and it is really good for gaming, because it's got 19 ports at the back for switches and analog sticks. So it gives um, the gamer kind of control of their setup and they're not restricted to kind of the standard setup which doesn't really work for people. As you can see here, these are um, controllers, the PS4 controller and Xbox controller, but they're not adapted. I, I thought I'd just take you through some of the issues I had with um, each of them really. Um, with the Xbox, I found the control. I found the controller very um, heavy, and I I couldn't press the triggers at the back because it needed too much force. And also, I didn't like the position of the analog sticks. So that's the problem with the Xbox controller. The problem with the PS4 controller was again the, the weight of it and um, some of the buttons were in different places and it was very kind of, I couldn't press half of the buttons which when you're gaming you, you need to press all the buttons. As you can see I'm just kind of demonstrating to you how I'm holding the control and the position of my hands are in. As you can see, the Titan one, it's got two wires. The black one goes straight into your console, and the grey one goes into your computer, because with Titan 2, it only works through a certain software. But yes, as you can see, my hands there, kind of, I, I game using a table, so I've always got the support and these sponges just help me 
kind of to keep my hands in the right position. And under the control, you can see the stand that kind of was 3D printed, and that helps to kind of study the controller for me. So I'm not getting tired for gaming. I can game for uh, a lot longer than I could before just because of the the stand. I never really realized how heavy the controller was um, until I got this stand that um, a special effect you can kind of uh, get it from them as well. So yeah, this is just a little demonstration really. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, as you can see, I've got a head switch, so a little tap, as you can see, that 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 will um, do an action in the game. I just want to show you by how I game on a PC as well as just control the computer um, for other things than gaming. And this is my mouse. It is the best one for me. It's a Logitech G502. Now, it, it's a specialized gaming mouse, but what makes it good is the buttons are a lot more easier to press and there's a lot of buttons at the side which you can really program to do different kind of actions in a game or just generally using it and also the scroll wheel is very the scroll wheel is very easy to use as well it's very light so this is kind of the, the mouse i take around with me all the time just so I can access PC gaming as well. Through tweeting about my experiences on Twitter and writing my blog about um, kind of having to share as well as gaming. So through that, a lot of companies, game developers, they kind of uh, contacted me. So I've worked kind of with a, a few game developers really as accessibility consultant, just to kind of test the game out and show, um, explain to them about inclusivity and especially catering for gamers with um, kind of a, a, kind of a, a deteriorating kind of a deteriorating disease like like a douche. I become so passionate about accessible gaming that I've been to a few conferences uh, re regarding uh, accessibility. Uh, last year I went to the GA conference in Paris and I was on a panel talking about disabilities, kind of fine motor disabilities and mobility, kind of disabilities that what we kind of need in in games to make the game a lot more enjoyable for us. I've also spoken at the Adventure at the Adventure X conference, which I kind of spoke about this disability representation in game stories. And I, I, I enjoyed that very much because I enjoy just talking about characters. The, the gaming industry completely has listened and there's a lot of advances kind of in accessibility because they're listening to the input and feedback of disabled people. And there's been a lot of high profile games recently, like Gears of War 5, um, Uncharted 4, and uh, with really good kind of options for people that um, have one hand or if people can't press two buttons at once they've got something called a toggle so you press it once and it kind of holds it down and that's quite an important thing in uh, like first person shooters which it makes makes it a lot 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 easier for people because that the game developers are actually 
working with accessibility consultants all through production of the game, which is quite revolutionary. Kind of game developers need to realize that they can't kind of exclude gamers that have a disability because actually we make up 30% of the gaming industry so um, that they could make a lot of money from us really if if they actually um, uh, kind of make games kind of enjoyable because there's a lot of games um, that recently because of mobility issues a, a lot of gamers just don't get the they just don't buy the game until they kind of know about kind of the settings which is quite a, a difficult thing but the industry is kind of um, understood, understanding that a lot more but with kind of a deteriorated condition like Dusha there are quite a few games that I don't um, I, I still can't play like first position shooters or, or, or games that are a lot fast but I think for, for me that's a choice but there is a lot out there for gamers that like first position shooters or kind of uh, platformers those kind of games because even through conferences like the GA conference I've realized that accessible gaming isn't just about your condition it's it's about the whole range of disabilities from people that are blind gamers to gamers that only have one hand so there is a lot out there which is quite nice to hear because um, there's a lot more advances for gamers like us which I really hope this workshop has really just given you a small insight of what is possible and that you don't have to stop gaming. You, if you want to get in contact with a um, special effect, as you can see here, here is their contact details and uh, kind of their logo, just so you can ring them or email them and they'd be very happy to help you. If you want to get in contact with me, here are my details and you can also um, access my blog on Cali Vivek at uncallyvivek.com if you want any advice or further help with gaming. Thank you for listening to my kind of my insight into accessible gaming. I hope it's given you a lot of tips and um, hope really that you can carry on gaming or you can kind of assist someone into carry on gaming. And I, I just want to say good luck and enjoy the Action to Shed conference. 2019 and I, I welcome any further questions or contact just uh, uh, just contact me through my details and I'll be happy to assist you as I've been assisted to kind of carry on gaming and spread awareness of hope.